welcome to a country in political crisis. In some countries that means bombs and bullets, but not in Belgium. Europe's superpowers have battled in this country for centuries, so Belgians have no taste for that. This is the town of Stablo, home to French-speaking Walloons. Attention, je vais faire une. Voilà, on va te coiffer. Attends. Julianne Thomas, her mother Joanna, and her father Jarno are part of something their town has been doing for more than a thousand years. <laughs> Back in the 7th century, the town's monks were banned from taking part in this festival. So they disguised themselves in costumes like these and delighted in mocking the local nobility. The weapons, though, are not for the squeamish. They're inflated pig's bladders. Ah. Uh, I think those who want to really separate the flora of Wallonie don't come here, and I don't think they understand anything to the Belgian. Ce qui est dommage, c'est qu'on parle seulement de quelques personnes qui veulent séparer la Belgique, mais on ne parle pas des milliers de personnes qui, eux, veulent garder la Belgique unie. The parade can't hide the fact that this is one of Western Europe's poorest regions. Unemployment here is double what it is in the Flemish North, and the public sector here soaks up twice as much of the federal budget. This region now needs a nation more than ever. This is the rich cultural history of the people who for a long time ran this country. Even though they're now far more likely to be poor and unemployed, they still know how to, how to have a really good time. And for some reason they love hitting people on the head with a pig's bladder. Now they can't even see what I'm doing. <laughs> So much for the French-speaking half of the country. Now let's venture into the Flemish North. That's the Dutch-speaking region, which some would like to be the independent nation of Flanders. In the town of St Nicholas, they know how to enjoy themselves. As the nation's politicians try to find a power-sharing formula, they'll have to factor in the views of people like Peter Beisroger of the Flemish separatist party, the NVA. Wallonia and Vlaanderen op twee snelheden leven. Het zijn twee totaal verschillende landen. Eigenlijk zijn het landen, het zijn wel deelstaten, maar het zijn twee verschillende landen met twee, twee verschillende culturen. Do you see any point to Belgium itself? I mean, do you have a Belgian identity? Uh, personally? <laughs> Persoonlijk? Nee. <laughs> For centuries, the Flemish were ruled by the Spaniards, the French, the Austrians and the Dutch. It's only in the last few decades that they feel they've broken free of the Walloons. Oh, that's good. Wow, yeah. Peter is the acceptable political face of the push for independence. But sometimes the front can slip. So you don't have any friends who are French speakers? Not a lot, no, but uh, I, I mentioned, I I I begin over in in the beginning of our interview, where that where that I said that that we know nothing from the from the French media. They know nothing from here. We we live as two different countries. In the geest, we are actually all two we are all different. Belgium just doesn't have the institutions that most nations do. There's no national newspaper, no national political parties, there aren't even national charities, universities, and there's no national census. 
It's in the border area between Flanders and Wallonia that you can find some of the greatest concerns about the possibility of Belgium splitting apart. Take the case of the town of Hoyliar. It has a significant French-speaking community in a wedge of Flemish territory. All the French-speaking people who have problems, they phone me, oh, that's do. true. Right. For 15 years, Marie-Claire Guillard has been a local politician here. Because I don't know... She's unusual because she's nominally Flemish, but she speaks French, not Dutch, in her home. Oh, this is the border? Yes. Under the bridge? And on the other side is, is La Hulp. So we're on the Flemish, Flemish side. Part. Other side's French? Yes. She points out a restaurant forced out of business because they were French, a school that refuses to accept French-speaking children, and a tennis club that demands all its coaches speak only Flemish. What she fears are local laws that stop French speakers from buying houses. If first, before you come, you say, yes, if you don't know Flemish, you, you won't come here. I found it's a little racist. So you think it is driven by racism? Some people, not all of them, and uh, perhaps it's 5% who are raci racist and the rest is following because they don't dare say the country, and that's not good. In the heart of the capital, Brussels, which is multicultural and international, you find what many consider to be political poison. Pumpkin, pumpkin soup, uh, carrots. The Vlaams Belang Flemish nationalists may be on the far right, but a whopping 20% of the nation last year voted for views like this, expressed by party chairman Bruno Valcaniers. Belgium is indeed, in my opinion, it's an occupier, because basically it was created to dominate, um, to let the French culture dominate the Dutch culture. So in my opinion, it's an occupier. Deemed racist by the courts and excluded from the federal negotiations, their stance is electoral honey. A tough line on immigrants and complete disdain for Belgium. There is no common vision anymore. There's no common values, no common virtues anymore in Belgium. Does that mean there's now no longer any meaning in being Belgian? Um, for us, there never was. And, and, and for more and more people today, uh, there isn't indeed. That is correct. Such thinking is the antithesis of the spirit embodied in the European Union. But it's the EU that has made the prospect of independence more viable, with a common currency and a bank, amongst other things. Against that, it's Brussels, the internationalised, officially bilingual city, that makes splitting the country that much more difficult. La Belgique est un peu un laboratoire de ce que va être l'Europe demain. Est-ce que l'Europe va être une Europe vraiment politique Est-ce qu'elle va demeurer une, simplement une zone de libre-échange économique euh, Est-ce qu'elle va être capable d'avoir un, un poids politique Quelle Europe L'Europe des régions, l'Europe des nations, l'Europe fédérale Je pense que l'Europe sera un peu ce que la Belgique va devenir demain. The atomium, a 100 metre high version of an iron atom, was built in the 1950s when unity never seemed in doubt. In the end, there will be political compromise here, with even more power taken away from the federal government and given to the regions. No one knows if that will split the atom of national unity.